let me be clear. We cannot rescue them. The societies of the bottom billion can only be rescued from within. In every society of the bottom billion, there are people working for change. But usually, they are defeated by the powerful internal forces stacked against them. We should be helping the heroes. This is a quote from Mr. Paul Collier. From 1998 to, to, to 2003, he was the director of developmental research at the World Bank and a senior advisor for the Blair Commission for Africa. I think Mr. Collier is onto something. But I do want to make one small change, and that would be to add the word local. Across Africa, we should be helping our local heroes. My name is Lindwe Matladi, and I'm the founder of Africa Teen Geeks, an organization that works to increase access to tech for Africa's youth. And today, I would like to talk to you about upward mobility, the ability of an individual or a society to transcend a background of poverty. In many of the world's poorest countries, the idea of upward mobility may seem as a myth. People who are, in many ways, having to use every ounce of their energy just to make it from day to day may find the idea that you can transcend from a background of poverty a bit idealistic. Well, you can call me idealistic, but I do think that upward mobility is possible for the world's most, most vulnerable societies. But to make it possible, we first have to understand why so many poor countries remain poor. And then we need to support the local heroes that myself and Mr. Collier mentioned and help them build from within. There is a wealth of research on why poor countries remain poor. And while not all researchers agree, but two things always pop up, and that are the reason being corruption and the absence of a skilled workforce. Let's start with a problem that is sadly ubiquitous in many of Africa, and indeed in the world's most poorest countries, and that would be corruption. You may not know this, but a lion can hunt mice. You don't see or hear about it often because for a lion to hunt a mice is an extremely bad idea. The tiny bit of nutrients a lion would get from eating one mouse isn't worth the effort it takes for it to catch it. So lions could hunt mice all day and feel like they are prospering, but in reality, they would be starving to death. This is why lions hunt larger animals like the gazelle. They may take more energy to hunt, but the payback more than makes up for the effort. Why do I bring this up? I have noticed that corruption often goes unpunished and unchecked because those in powers are able to distract the public with mice. They catch a few of these mice to make the public feel like they're doing something or, or accomplishing something, when in reality they're just slowly starving their people. That's why it's up to local heroes, like you and me, to hunt the gazelle. And then, the gazelle that I think we can actually hunt is in the realm of education. While you can always mostly hear me championing STEM, in this case, it's not enough. And I would advise that a political education needs to take place, specifically, Young Africans who have less opportunity for upward mobility due to living in the continent with one of the most highest youth unemployment need to learn about active citizenship. We need to teach our children about why the countries they live in don't work. But moreover, they need to learn that they can change this. They need to understand that they should not allow themselves to be used 
as pawns in political battles or expected to fight for political parties who would not fight for them. And we need them to know that through becoming active citizens who demand better from their society, they can have a voice and indeed a seat at the table. The journey I started with Africa Teen Gigs have allowed me to work with different governments. And this has given me some insights on how different societies work. Many of the leaders I've had the privilege to work with had brilliant ideas and the best intentions, yet they are not able to create meaningful change because they are surrounded by perpetual cycle of institutional corruption and greed. In many of the poorest countries I've visited, I've seen that the same pattern really is the same everywhere. Politicians will appoint the most skilled people they can to the most powerful positions. To, to change things for the better, certainly not. These skilled people are almost always expected to help these politicians line their pockets for their retirement. If you don't want your skills to be used in this way, you are likely to be sidelined, kicked out, and even have your character assassinated. When this pattern becomes a normalized part of the system, what you see is the sidelining of those with the best ideas. This leads to a complete stagnation of development and deteriorating infrastructure deepening po and deepening poverty, which in turn leads to greater debt, downgrades, and so the cycle of poverty continues for a country's most vulnerable people. In short, we keep chasing the mice while we are starving. They will make big announcement. Like, you know, there, there won't be anything that comes out of it. I was telling my daughter the other day that we live in a country, we don't live in a country of actions, we live in a country of announcements. In their book, Why Nations Fails, Daron and James Robinson cite bad political institutions as the reason why many countries remain poor and because of colonization. Because colonizing powers had no interest, interest in making institutions to work. All they wanted was to have the ability to extract the wealth for their countries. But after they left, the leaders that were supposedly the liberators didn't change any of these institutions. Not to, to, for them to extract the wealth for other nations, but to keep it for themselves. But corruption is not just a governmental problem. The ability of corruption to seep into all areas of society can be overstated. As Esther Duflo and her husband say in their book, Poor Economics, if teachers or nurses do not come to work, no education or health policy can be implemented. If truck drivers can pay small bribe to drive massively overloaded truck, billions of dollars will be wasted in building roads that will be destroyed under their wills. So we see that how corruption has a way of creating societies where development is stifled right out of the gate. And so we need to support our local heroes, those people that will be going and educating the people, the young people, to hunt gazelles instead of mice. In their book, Disrupting Class, Clayton Christensen speaks about how education can transform societies. If you think this is where I get my, my passion for, uh, for promoting STEM, you are right. What they talk about is how Japan became an economic powerhouse in the 1970s and 80s, only a few decades after their entire nation was torn apart by World War II. They attribute this to the fact that four times as many Japanese school children were learning STEM subjects than in the US, and that allowed them to grow faster. So ultimately, above all, poor countries need a skilled workforce that, can, that they can rely on rather than trying to rely on the outside world. I'm calling on our local heroes to do everything they can to promote STEM subjects in schools, and I'm calling on the world at large to support these heroes who can make emphasis on STEM subjects the norm. 
STEM sessions can help create a skilled workforce, and active citizens can help ensure that the workforce is able to work without any obstruction. Remember why lions should hunt gazelles and not mice. Don't be distracted by the photo ops and with men in suits holding up the latest mouse they've caught. Hunt gazelles instead. By educating your people about being active citizens and increasing their access to STEM subjects, these are the only way we can overcome corruption. Finally, let's recall the quote from Paul Collier that I mentioned at the beginning of the talk. Much has been written about the problems aid has caused. So I won't go into detail on this. Suffice to say that aid, while well-intentioned, has created more dependency with African countries and more developing countries looking for quick fixes and outside solutions when they needed to focus on creating a skilled workforce that can tackle problems head on without the need for external help. I agree with Paul Collier that we need to support the heroes that are doing the work. But I added a small, a small thing. I ask that we do all we can to build from within and support the local heroes. Thank you.